All right, so in this video, let's take a look at the basic Zaplink to Photoshop workflow. We're going to take our, our texture document that we created in the first couple of tutorials, and we're going to go ahead and paint a few materials down to render out just a, a basic color pass and a directional lighting and shadow pass so that we can do some basic compositing in Photoshop. In the next video, we'll look at some advanced material stuff, but for now, let's dive into just the basics of um, Zaplink. So I'm going to make sure first I've got my simple brush selected, and I'm going to go back to my layers here, and I'm going to go ahead and merge both the brick layers together so that they're on one layer, and I'm going to leave the grout on its own layer. We'll see how those get translated into Photoshop soon. I'm also going to start off just by duplicating each of these. I'm going to move them down um, next to each other, and I'm just going to merge them. The reason is is that we need to keep these two intact, but eventually we're going to want one merged layer because it'll make some of our, our process go a little bit faster. But for now, let's go back to these two original layers. So I'm going to go ahead and select just the flat color material. I'm going to go with a really big draw size and a large focal shift. I'm going to make sure that I have Z add off and material channel only on and I'll just go ahead and paint all over the entire canvas. So I'm keeping the depth information intact and I'm I'm not changing the color at all. I'm, I'm leaving that alone because I don't have the RGB channel activated. And I'll do that now again for the the other layer. So now we've got just our um, color pass. So we're ready to send this over for Zaplink. But first, some of the attributes we may want to keep an eye out for inside the render palette are going to be mainly anti-aliasing. For the demo, I'm going to leave it at one, but you might want to bring it up to at least two just to help get rid of some jaggies. Uh, when I test render, I'll always leave it at one, though. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're always going to be using best render when we render out these through Zaplink. So I'm going to go ahead and just activate a best render and I'm going to say document Zaplink and say OK. So Zaplink is going to create now uh, a temporary file here with all of our layers and shading in it. Oops sure why that happened. <laughs> um, one thing to note is that we've got this shading layer that doesn't have anything for now, but um, these are going to be each of our document layers, and they're going to come with a layer mask here that we can use for additional blending when we edit our color map in here. So we want to keep these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Control N to create a new blank document the size of my ZBrush document. And then <coughs> and then to get these layers into my new working document, I'm going to hold Control and Shift, and I'm just going to then drag this layer over into my, my working Photoshop document. You see, if I just drag this layer over, it's going to sort of you know, paste that layer to wherever the my cursor was inside that document. If I hold Shift and Control while I drag, it's going to center it inside the document for me. So uh, it's just going to help with that process. Make sure everything is lined up in there. Another thing to note is that inside of my channels view, um, ZBrush has gone and rendered out the the alpha channel, or the depth channel, I should say, into the alpha channel of this document. So I can just say Control A to select the entire canvas, Control C to copy it, and then I'll just go ahead and paste it in here. Also, just go ahead and name and then group with Control G, and I'll just paste that name in there. And I'll just go ahead and create a group for my color layers. Uh, the background layer, I'll leave that for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this document open. 
because when we do our next render, it'll just update automatically. So when I go back into ZBrush, I'm going to say OK Unchanged. And now we're ready to do a, a lighting pass. Well, I'm going to hide. Whoops. <laughs> First, I'm going to make sure to turn Preview Render back on. That way ZBrush isn't trying to re-execute a best render. I'm going to hide those initial you know, source layers. And now I'm going to work on just the merged layer. I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, so I can start painting down another material. And, um, you know, I'm only working on one layer. Since I've already got my, my layer masks in Photoshop, uh, I can just start working in ZBrush on one layer and just render that. So I just painted down the normal map shader. And one thing to note is that with the preview render here, um, it's not going to give us a very good normal map. Uh, so we're going to have to use the best render, but before we do that, we're going to want to make sure we're not using shadows, because we don't want to bake any shadows into our normal map. So we're going to disable shadows, and then we're going to execute another best render. Um, now I can go to Document, Zap Link, OK, and Photoshop will ask me to update. So what I can do now is you'll see that the normal map is part of the shading layer now and there's the color layer and, and everything in here. I can just select my top layer. I can hold shift and select my bottom layer and hit control E to collapse all those down into one layer. Now I can hold control and shift and drag it into my working document. So now I've got my normal map centered into my working document. And I'll just go ahead and throw that in a group. There we go. So now back in ZBrush, I'm going to go ahead and paint down, well, you could use the, the, uh, the basic material. The other thing about working on a copy here, when we want a lighting pass, is we can just turn MRGB on, make sure we're set to white, and raise my RGB intensity. And I can just paint down this, uh, this default material and we could go ahead and render a light pass off this. Um, of course, we're going we're gonna to want to enable shadows first. But I've got a custom material that I prefer to use. It's a little bit similar to the white matte cap, which is what we used when we originally created this document in the previous tutorials. But one thing to note about the matte cap is that it doesn't respect light position. So as I'm rotating this light about, uh, the light direction isn't changing because it's all baked inside the matte cap. Um, so you could use the basic material, but what I've got is a custom material. It's basically made to emulate the look of the white matte cap, and but it works with ZBrush lights. So as I rotate and add lights, then um, the material will respond. One thing to note too about the lights before we render this pass is like we looked at in the previous video, I've got a custom light rig set up. It's basically just my my preference is a little bit of a higher light to match more of like the original white matte cap and there's some higher quality shadows and they're a little bit harder edged they aren't so soft so it's a good idea to find light settings that you like and materials that you like for these passes and then go ahead and save them and reuse them when you render so we're ready to send this over to Photoshop now we've got shadows on set your anti-aliasing to whatever is appropriate for you um, one thing to note though is that if I hit best render it might take a little while to render and I'm gonna hit escape right away so I hit best and then I hit escape to cancel that render the reason is because when I come back in a document zap link and say OK zap link is gonna execute a best render even if I've already done so and waited for it to finish it's always gonna re-render so Whenever I activate best, I cancel it right away and then just wait for it once um, when Zaplink does it. 
So you don't have to sit here and wait for the same thing to render twice. Alright, so here's our light map. Just like we did with the normal map, we're going to shift select these layers, hit control E to flatten. And I realize I've been saying uh, control shift and dragging, but we actually only need to hold shift and drag. And then we've got our, our copy sort of centered nicely in the in our document. One thing to check on all these light passes, however, is the seams. So right away I'm going to say filter, other, offset, and I'm going to give a dimension that's half my document size. And right away we can start to see some issues where cast shadows haven't been generated at the top of the canvas. And you can kind of start to see here too on the sides where the cast shadow was split. Um, so on these document borders here, and then down, or rather up here, there's no cast shadows. So we can fix that easily enough in ZBrush. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this layer. And to fix that, I'll just say OK Unchanged. To fix that, we're just going to give this layer a slight offset. doesn't have to be much, and I'll keep it a power of 2, so I'll just say maybe 64. And that put me right in the center of this row of bricks. So now I don't have a grout line at the edges of my canvas, and the cast shadow issue on the sides of the canvas wasn't you know, that big of a deal, so I'm not going to worry about displacing it horizontally. But um, if if there was a really large cast shadow that was split and would be hard to fix, then um, you know, go ahead and displace horizontally as well. So I'm going to go ahead and re-render that and send it over. All right, so we're back in Photoshop with our new layer, and we'll just bring it in. And right away we see that. Um, the two don't line up anymore, of course, because I offset it in ZBrush. So I'll go ahead and fix that just by saying Filter, Other, Offset. Let me zero out the horizontal. And I'll just say negative 64 in the vertical here. Say OK. So now we should be back to lining up with our initial color passes. And right away you'll see the si this seam here and that's easy easy enough to fix. We're going to use the spot healing brush and just a small brush radius, four or six will be fine. And we'll just sort of press down somewhere outside the canvas and hold shift to draw a straight line across. Um, and as long as we have content aware on, ZBrush will do a pretty good, or excuse me, Photoshop will do a pretty good job of uh, just fixing that up, filling it in. And now our grout area that was a problem now has cast shadows at both the top and the bottom. So another note about seams is that generally I always go ahead and fix them as I bring layers in. Um, and the reason is because um, no matter how perfectly you line these pieces up in ZBrush, uh, you'll always have usually a slight line here or seam to deal with usually just from cavity settings and other material settings and such but using that um, spot healing brush it's easy enough to fix quickly and doing it now means that as I start compositing all these layers later they don't add up to one bigger worse seam so I always fix it on all my layers as I bring them in then I'll go ahead and just offset it back to its original position just by clicking on the previously stored offset setting here. And now I have a seamless shadow map. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at rendering an ambient occlusion map to go along with this uh, sort of light pass. And um, then we'll look at some custom materials and some more Photoshop work.